Vladimir Svetoslavich the Great was a prince of Novgorod, Grand Prince of Kiev, and ruler of Kiev and Rus from 980 to 1015. Vladimir's father was Prince Svetoslav of the Rurik dynasty. After the death of his father in 972, Vladimir, who was then Prince of Novgorod, was forced to flee to Scandinavia in 976 after his brother Yaropok had murdered his other brother Oleg and conquered Rus. In Sweden, with the help from his relative Lady Jarl Haken Sigurdsson, ruler of Norway, he assembled the Varangian army and reconquered Novgorod from Yaropok. By 980 Vladimir had consolidated the Kievan realm from modern-day Ukraine to the Baltic Sea and had solidified the frontiers against incursions of Bulgarian, Baltic, and Eastern nomads. Originally a follower of Slavic paganism, Vladimir converted to Christianity in 988 and Christianized the Kievan Rus. Rise to the throne Born in 958, Vladimir was the natural son and younger son of Svetoslav I of Kiev by his housekeeper Malusha. Malusha is described in the Norse sagas as a prophetess who lived to the age of 100 and was brought from her cave to the palace to predict the future. Malusha's brother Dobrynya was Vladimir's tutor and most trusted advisor. Hagiographic tradition of dubious authenticity also connects his childhood with the name of his grandmother, Olga Prekrasar, who was Christian and governed the capital during Svetoslav's frequent military campaigns. His place of birth is identified by different authors either as Budjetichi or Budnik, transferring his capital to Perayaslavitz in 969. Svetoslav designated Vladimir ruler of Novgorod the Great but gave Kiev to his legitimate son Yaropok. After Svetoslav's death in 972, a fratricidal war erupted in 976 between Yaropok and his younger brother Oleg, ruler of the Drevlins. In 977 Vladimir fled to his kinsman Harkon Sigurdsson, ruler of Norway, collecting as many Norse warriors as he could to assist him to recover Novgorod. On his return the next year, he marched against Yaropok. On his way to Kiev he sent ambassadors to Rogvolid, Prince of Polosk, to sue for the hand of his daughter Renada. The high-born princess refused to affiance herself to the son of a bondswoman, so Vladimir attacked Polosk, slew Rogvolid, and took Ranhild by force. Polosk was a key fortress on the way to Kiev, and capturing Polosk in Smolensk facilitated the taking of Kiev in 978 where he slew Yaropok by treachery and was proclaimed Nyaz of all Kiev in Rus. Years of pagan rule Vladimir continued to expand his territories beyond his father's extensive domain. In 981, he seized the Chervan towns from the Poles. In 981 to 982 he suppressed a Vyatichi rebellion. In 983, he subdued the Yatvingens. In 984, he conquered the Radimich, and in 985, he conducted a military campaign against the Volga Bulgars, planting numerous fortresses and colonies on his way. Although Christianity spread in the region under Oleg's rule, Vladimir had remained a thoroughgoing pagan, taking 800 concubines and erecting pagan statues enshrined to gods. He may have attempted to reform Slavic paganism by establishing the thunder god, Perun, as a supreme deity. Open abuse of the deities that most people in Rus revered triggered widespread indignation. A mob killed the Christian Fyodor and his son Yoan. Immediately after the murder of Fyodor and Yoan, early medieval Rus saw persecutions against Christians, many of whom escaped or concealed their belief. However, Prince Vladimir mused over the incident long after, and not least for political considerations. According to the early Slavic chronicle called Tale of Bygone Years, which describes life in Kyivan Rus up to the year 1110, he sent his envoys throughout the civilized world to judge firsthand the major religions of the time, Islam, Roman Catholicism, Judaism, and Byzantine Orthodoxy. 
they were most impressed with their visit to Constantinople, saying, We knew not whether we were in heaven or on earth, we only know that God dwells there among the people, and their service is fairer than the ceremonies of other nations. Christianization of the Kievan Rus the primary chronicle reports that in the year 987, after the consultation with his boyars, Vladimir the Great sent ten boys to study the religions of the various neighboring nations whose representatives had been urging him to embrace their respective faiths. The result is described by the chronicler Nesta. Of the Muslim Bulgarians of the Volga the envoys reported there is no gladness among them, only sorrow and a great stench. He also reported that Islam was undesirable due to its taboo against alcoholic beverages and pork. Vladimir remarked on the occasion, Drinking is the joy of all Rus. We cannot exist without that pleasure. Ukrainian and Russian sources also describe Vladimir consulting with Jewish envoys and questioning them about their religion, but ultimately rejecting it as well, saying that their loss of Jerusalem was evidence that they had been abandoned by God. His emissaries also visited Roman Catholic and Orthodox missionaries. Ultimately Vladimir settled on Eastern Orthodox Christianity. In the churches of the Germans his emissaries saw no beauty, but at Constantinople, where the full festival ritual of the Byzantine church was set in motion to impress them, they found their ideal. We no longer knew whether we were in heaven or on earth, they reported, describing a majestic divine liturgy in high Sophia, nor such beauty, and we know not how to tell of it. If Vladimir was impressed by this account of his envoys, he was even more attracted by the political gains of the Byzantine alliance. In 988, having taken the town of Chersonesos in Crimea, he boldly negotiated for the hand of Emperor Basil II's sister, Anna. Never before had a Byzantine imperial princess, and one, born in the purple, at that, married a barbarian. As matrimonial offers of French kings and German emperors had been peremptorily rejected, in short, to marry the 27-year-old princess to a pagan Slav seemed impossible. Vladimir was baptized at Chersonesos, however, taking the Christian name of Basil out of compliment to his imperial brother-in-law, the sacrament was followed by his wedding to Anna. Returning to Kiev in triumph, he destroyed pagan monuments and established many churches, starting with a church dedicated to Saint. Basel, and the Church of the Tithes. Arab sources, both Muslim and Christian, present a different story of Vladimir's conversion. Yahya of Antioch, al-Rudrawari, al-Makan, al-Dimashki, and Ibn al-Atir all give essentially the same account. In 987, Bardis Sclerus and Bardis Focus revolted against the Byzantine Emperor Basil II. Both rebels briefly joined forces, but then Badis Focus proclaimed himself emperor on 14 September 987. Basil II turned to the Kievan Rus for assistance, even though they were considered enemies at that time. Vladimir agreed, in exchange for a marital tie, he also agreed to accept Christianity as his religion and to Christianize his people. When the wedding arrangements were settled, Vladimir dispatched 6,000 troops to the Byzantine Empire, and they helped to put down the revolt. Christian reign. Vladimir then formed a great council out of his boyars and set his twelve sons over his subject principalities. According to the primary chronicle, he founded the city of Belgorod in 991. In 992 he went on a campaign against the Croats, most likely the white Croats that lived on the border of modern Ukraine. This campaign was cut short by the attacks of the Pekinegs on and around Kiev. In his later years he lived in a relative peace with his other neighbors. Boleslav I of Poland, Stephen I of Hungary, and Andrzej the Czech. After Anna's death, he married again, likely to a granddaughter of Otto the Great. In 1014 his son Yaroslav the Wise stopped paying tribute. 
Vladimir decided to chastise the insolence of his son and began gathering troops against him. Vladimir fell ill, however, most likely of old age, and died at Berestovo, near Kiev. The various parts of his dismembered body were distributed among his numerous sacred foundations and were venerated as relics. Family the fate of all Vladimir's daughters, whose number is around nine, is uncertain. Olava or Alagia, speculative she might have been mother of Vyacheslav while others claim that it is a confusion with Helena Le Carpane of Vyacheslav, Prince of Novgorod, a widow of Yaropok I, a Greek nun Svitopolk the Accursed, possibly the surviving son of Yaropok. Renada, later upon divorce she entered a convent taking the Christian name of Anastasia Isyaslav of Polosk, Prince of Polosk Yaroslav the Wise, Prince of Rostov, Prince of Novgorod, Grand Prince of Kiev, possibly he was a son of Anna rather than Renada. Another interesting fact that he was younger than Svitopolk according to the words of Boris in the tale of bygone years and not as it was officially known. Also the fact of him being the Prince of Rostov is highly doubtful although not discarded. Visev Olid, possibly the Swedish Prince Wiswald of Volen, was perhaps the first husband of Estide Svenstater Emstislav. Other Emstislav that possibly died as an infant if he was ever born Emstislav of Chernigov, Prince of Tutara Khan, Prince of Chernigov. Other sources claim him to be son of other mothers Predslava, a concubine of Bolslor I Probri according to Jester Principum Polinorum Prima Slava. Some source state that she was a wife of the Duke Laszlo, the bald, of Arpadians Ems to Slava. In 1018 was taken by Bolslor I Probri among the other daughters. Bulgarian Adela. Some sources claim that Adela is not necessarily Bulgarian as Boris and Glebe were born from some other wife Boris, Prince of Rostov. Remarkable is the fact that Rostov Principality as well as the Principality of Murom used to border the territory of Olga Bulgars Glebe. Prince of Murom, as Boris, Gleb is being also claimed the son of Anna Porfirogenita Stanislav, Prince of Smolensk possible of another wife and a fate of whom is not certain Sudislav, Prince of Pskov, possible of another wife, but he is mentioned in Nikon's Chronicles. He spent 35 years in prison and later before dying, turned into a monk. Malfreda Svitoslav, Prince of Drevlins, Anna Porfirogenita Theophana, a wife of Novgorod Posadnik Ostromir, a grandson of semi-legendary Dobrunya, a granddaughter of Otto the Great Maria Dobroniega of Kiev, the Duchess of Poland, married around 1040 to Casimir I the Restorer, Duke of Poland Agatha, a theoretical daughter according to Jet. Other possible family an out-of-marriage daughter, a wife of the Nordmark Margrave Bernard Posvist. A son of Vladimir according to Huston Chronicles. He, possibly, was the Prince Chrysok here mentioned by Nightast Choniates. Significance and Legacy The Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches celebrate the feast day of Saint Vladimir on 15 July. The town Volodymyr Vilinskaya in northwestern Ukraine was founded by Vladimir and is named after him. The foundation of another town, Vladimir in Russia, is usually attributed to Vladimir Monomak. However some researchers argue that it was also founded by Vladimir the Great. St. Volodymyr's Cathedral, one of the largest cathedrals in Kiev, is dedicated to Vladimir the Great, as was originally the University of Kiev, the Imperial Russian Order of St. Vladimir and St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary in the United States are also named after him. The memory of Vladimir was also kept alive by innumerable Russian folk ballads and legends, which refer to him as Krasno Solnishko. The Varangian period of Eastern Slavic history ceases with Vladimir, and the Christian period begins. The appropriation of Kiev and Rus as part of national history has also been a topic of contention in Ukrainophile versus Russophile schools of historiography since the Soviet era. Gallery Vladimir the Great on the Millennium of Russia Monument in Novgorod. 
monument to Vladimir the Great and the monk Fyodor at Pushkin Park in Vladimir, Russia. Vladimir is a symbol of Ukrainian nationalism. Saint Volodymyr, ruler of Ukraine, 980-1015, erected by Ukrainians in Great Britain in 1988 to celebrate the establishment of Christianity in Ukraine by Vladimir in 988.